Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Dice Tower review. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. Today we're going to be taking a look at a roll and ride from the esteemed Paolo Mori. This is, in English anyway, Rustling Leaves. And in German, that. <laughs> I'm not pronouncing it. <laughs> no. that's, a, that's a trap. Not okay? a chance. Not, not a chance. gonna happen. No. So in this game you're going to get four pads of paper, representing four seasons, and a pair of dice. That's everything that comes in here. And the rule book, which is, well, in this one in German, but you can find it in English online. In the game, everybody has one of those sheets. You roll those dice, and simultaneously, on every roll, everyone will mark something on their sheet, okay? Trying to get points. That's it. It's a roll and a write. Let me give you a look at what's going on in one of these. I'll use one of the seasons in here, but I'll give you a look at all four. And then we'll come on back, give you some thoughts on this. The game comes with four different pads here, each one for a different season, and you can play with whichever one you want to. They will have different symbols, and they will have slightly different rules as to the play. So here we go, and we've got here, lastly, the winter one. Very pretty. So, I'm going to be showing you one of the first from the first stack there. Let me show you that. Here we go. That's going to be it. The rules for scoring are going to be across the bottom. Everyone plays simultaneously based on the same roll. The game comes with two dice. They are identical dice. They have one, one, two twos, two threes, and a four. And one of the twos has this cloud symbol. And again, they are identical except for the color, all right? So, how does it work? Well, each player is going to pick a spot where they will begin. And that is one of these right here, the yellow leaves with the numbers. So let's say I'm starting at this one right here, okay? Let's start right there. Uh, one player is gonna roll the dice. And everyone will use this same roll, except for once in the game where you can use a joker and change it. But normally, you're gonna use that roll to Create an area and then select everything within that area of one type of thing and mark them off for victory points. Once everyone has done that, anyone who wants to bow out of scoring and say, I think I'm, I'm done, I'm not going to get anything better than this, can stop. Everyone else can keep going until everyone has bowed out. Or if you bust, meaning the roll is not something you can add on to the board, you have to mark that off. If you time out because you've busted too many times, then you're also done, all right? So going back to our roll here, there's a cloud right there. So on this sheet specifically, we have to mark that we rolled a cloud. Those just happen, okay? And now I am going to select an area of two by three that has to include my starting spot at the beginning, all right? So for example, I might say two by three, I'm gonna do this area right here. That area is going to be my opening area, all right? Two by three. From within that, I'm going to select everything of one kind. So I can take the tree, the uh, uh, butterflies, the bee, the bird, which won't do anything because I need a pair of birds and, uh, uh, you know, enclosed at the same time. But And then I'm going to mark those things off. And again, all of these will score differently. Uh, from season to season, the different symbols. So let's go through them. The first one here is the tree. If I take that tree, I'll mark a dot for that. Each tree is worth a single point, very simple. If you have 10 or more trees, however, you get a bonus five points. The B is going to score based on these purple flowers here, like these. So if I complete this first line of purple flowers, every B is worth three. If I complete the second line of three dots, every B is worth four and then every B is worth five, all right? Um, we've got the butterflies, which is what I was thinking I would take. Uh, and I got two, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna circle or, or scratch off that butterfly, that butterfly, and get myself two dots right there. Those are gonna be, we, be two, two points a piece, but you have to have an even number of butterflies. So right now I'm good, I'm getting four points for that. If I get a single other one, they're worth nothing right now. If I can get an even number again, boom, I'm back up to two points per. The birds, like I said, need to be in close together and you get five points for each pair of them. The rainbows are interesting. There are seven rainbows on the entire grid. If you get them all marked, you get seven points. 
Uh, I'm sorry, you get 30 points if you get all seven. If you do not do all seven, you get nothing at all. So if you start on this, you need to make sure you are committed to the rainbows and complete them. The clouds over here just happen, like I said, but they are scored based on these flowers right here. So those two score together. Now the bears in red, you do not want to uh, enclose them. You'll get points for not enclosing them, basically. Three points for not enclosing them, or you lose three, however you want to treat it. But it's basically three points if they are outside, all right? Crossing the river with a, with a square will lose you one point. And then every time you have a roll you can take, again, that's negative three as well. So that's my first roll, I did it. The next roll would happen two by three. So on every subsequent roll after the first one, which must include my opening area, I just have to be next to an area I've already utilized. So two by three here. Okay, I'm gonna go, uh, I'll do this. I'm gonna go two by three, I'm gonna do that. And this area does not cross the river, okay? It'd have to be actually, you know, have the river within it. And I'm going to take these purple flowers, so I get two of those. One, two. If I do that, I wanna invest in those bees also, so I can score those things together. And this is going to continue. Four by four, oof, that's very large. Um, that is very large, so now it gets a little bit tricky. I might have to cross the river, right? I might have to do something strange here. Um, certainly can't fit it here, it's only three right there, so I'm gonna have to go maybe up in this big area. I might use my wild now to change that. So this continues again with you very quickly running out of area until you choose to say, I'm done, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna score because you feel like any further roll, you'd have to just mark a dot over here because, well, you can't use that roll. It's too big. It's not an area you can utilize. So if you want to fold or you just bow out, you might actually be saving yourself some penalty points. Everybody will score up all their points. We see who's got the most, and that person, of course, is the winner of the game. And like I said, there are four of the seasons, each one with different symbols and different scoring. So there you go. This is a game I picked up. I had I had heard of it before. Okay. I'd seen it because I, I liked the designer, like mm -hmm. I said, and I'd uh, I'd come across it online somewhere. So I saw it this year in Germany at a convention we were at in Germany, and I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna get that for myself. I want to buy this one, just because it looked neat and it looks on the onset it looks different than a lot of roll and rights. I think that's true. I think the f looking at like you know the a, a splash of symbols mm -hmm. without knowing the rules even you look at all that and you go this doesn't look like the role and rights i'm used to that's true and it's especially important in this genre because it is such a crowded space yeah. there are so many role and right games that get released in a year and it seems to be just increasing mm -hmm. it's not gone down and so i think it's important to stand out visually which this one does yeah so that's cool then the Four Seasons thing, I think, yeah. is also another neat idea, both visually, but also because it's four different games, really, kind of. Mm -hmm. Four versions of the game, whatever, right. uh, with different scoring on each one. And they do kind of tie thematically a little bit to what's going on. You know, yeah, like, they do enough, anyway. Yeah, sort <laughs> of like, you know, during this season, you crossing the river loses you points. During this season, it's no problem. The river dried it's up. It's dried up now. During yeah. this other one, you cannot cross. It's you frozen know, or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, so I like those little things, the ideas and the little symbols changing, of course. It's just a, a pretty visual look. Speaking of the look goes kind of hand in hand with functionality of mm. these sheets, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's something I definitely want to bring up. When we first played this, we I passed out a sheet to everybody and uh, we pulled out some pencils. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Not really. Actually, I would even, <laughs> I would say maybe not functional. It's, it was right on the edge. We had to kind of... Uh, in that first game, we had to kind of, we all realized very early this was going like, to be an issue. Problem. Like, oh, okay, so how are we going to really differentiate this? And we had to each kind of come up with our own method. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you were like, well, I'm going to I'm going to round my corners. And so there were different ways to try to do it, but it, but it right. is, there is a functionality issue. And that's only exacerbated if you, which you, you, may, you may have planned on mentioning, there is an app version of there this. There is an app, well. yeah, yeah. And that 
removes that issue uh, completely. Yeah, the app will... The problem being, okay, in case it's not obvious, whenever I fill in a... or, or select a 2 by 3 area or whatever, mm -hmm. obviously if I just put a pencil mark on the outside, eventually there are enough of these that it is hard to see which ones are inside a selection and which ones are outside a selection, right? So if I leave a, a two by two area and there are boxes all around it, that two by two now like looks like it itself is in a box. Right. And unless you're very clear with having crossed something out or use a dark marker, which I did in the overview, then it's gonna be hard to see. Right. The app grays the entire selection out. You select something in it, but then the entire box is faded from view, right. making it very apparent what's not within a selection. That's a little tricky, mm -hmm. and it's something that's going to take some getting used to with the physical version of the game. I would right. not try it with pencils mm -hmm. again, um, and I would definitely have to almost teach people how to mark off what they're doing. Yes, it's just, it's something you have to be aware of and you have to be uh, careful because it can affect the scoring. I mean, this is a right. game all about various types of scoring and, you know, if you miss one or two of those, it can significantly change your score. So mm -hmm. it, it is a, a usability concern. Now, one neat thing in the rules, because generally the rules are very roll and write yeah. type stuff. Okay, I mean, you know, every one of these is one point. You have the most, though, bonuses. Oh, this is uh, this many, but you have to have an even number, an odd number. These pairs have to go together. We've seen this stuff, a mm -hmm. lot of it. Maybe not in this form factor with the cool little grid, but we've seen this kind of scoring. One thing I haven't seen in a roll and write, as far as I can remember, is the idea of bowing out whenever you want to. Right, right, right. This idea of... If, you, if there's a die roll and you cannot select it because there's no room, you lose some points. Mm -hmm. But at the end of every roll, after you do whatever you do, you can say, I'm done. I let everybody else keep going, but I'm done. My score is whatever it is right now. That's a really cool idea. It is, and it's it's one where, you know, some people might say, well, you know, now you're just sitting here waiting for 10 minutes. You're not going to be sitting there waiting no, for 10 minutes. I mean, you're going to be short. you're going to be doing it at a point where people might go one or two rolls <laughs> more, maybe. Yeah. So don't think of that as an issue because it's not. And it is a nice decision point. It is yeah. a decision point because, you know, you may get stuck with a roll you just physically can't take. Um, so you, you have mm -hmm. a little bit of push your luck there. It's like, well... If I get anything smaller than a 3 by 4 I'm going to at least have one more option. I'll probably right. at least sneak one more point out of it. But if I don't, then I'm losing a point. It's a nice little thing to it's have to a, consider. Yeah, it's not the end of the world, right? right. I mean, you, you push it, you lose, you know, like this one, three points. If you, there's a, a die roll you can't take, mm -hmm. okay, you lost three points. Your score went down. And you can bow out now. Right. Or you can keep pushing it. Mm -hmm. And you miss again because you really need, like, at best a 2 by something. Mm-hmm. That's another three points. You're going to keep going? I just think it's a neat end of game uh, trigger, decision, right. sort of flavor, yeah. Especially in a game that has some kind of shoot the moon scoring mechanics, too. Yeah. So if, like, yeah. if you need that last rainbow, and that's the difference between 30 points or no points, yeah. you're more likely to, to, to take that risk. And you might be willing to lose five, six points for the chance of earning 60. Or 30, sorry. Yeah, um, but yeah. that's a, you know, that's a, again, that's a nice little thing to consider. Yeah, yeah. Um, we should also talk a little bit about the seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, they're interesting. They're not, each one is not a full new game. No. It's the scoring things are a little bit different. But I do like the way that the designer takes the same few ideas and utilizes them differently. Like, for example, the clouds. The clouds that just show up on the dice, you cannot trigger those. Mm -hmm. In some seasons, they just enhance the scoring for some other symbol. But in one of these, for example, there's a specific symbol you have to select that must be included in your uh, selection mm -hmm. when that cloud comes up. It's a storm symbol. And you cannot choose a region if a cloud was rolled and that region does not include a storm symbol. Mm-hmm. I love it. I yeah. mean, again, it's a little twist, a little something different that changes the the flavor, the idea of what's going on just a little bit. It makes you adjust. If a single one of these was in the box, 
I don't think I'd be as happy with this. No, I agree. And I think that, that what is crucial is something that you, you kind of alluded to, is that they're not four different games, because I think that no, would have right. been too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but but they are variations on those scoring, so that you don't have to learn four different games. You just have to be like, okay, this is just a twist off of this. This is a twist off of that. Right, right. You know, these only score if they're odd. These only score if they're even in a different, you know, that type of a thing. Um, and so there's just enough difference between them that they feel distinct, they mm-hmm. feel unique, but you don't have to learn a new rule set with each one, uh, right, which I right. think would have been too much for a game of this weight, this length. I agree, I agree. And it is pretty short. The box is 20 minutes. That's about right. Yes, okay. yes, absolutely. All right, so for me, I'll go ahead and give my final thoughts here. I'm coming down at a nice, even, pleasant 7 out of 10. I like it. I enjoy the roll and write genre still. I don't think it's one that I'm personally over or mm. sick of or you know, but there is a lot of repetition there. This does not feel like repetition to me. I like what this is doing. Is it innovative? I wouldn't go that far. Mm. Uh, but I think it is distinct enough where it stands out on its own. I like the idea of this the dice being a a dimensions, mm-hmm. right? That's cool. I haven't seen other roll and rights that do that too much. If they do, they're sort of polyomino games. Right. There's a lot of polyomino games. This one's not really that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I enjoy it. It's quick. It's punchy. I love the seasonal thing. I love the the trappings here. Are they meaningless? Kind of meaningless. They're window dressing, mm. but they work for me. It makes this whole thing feel very soothing, very pleasant. And I love, like I said, a couple of those decisions. When you end, what does the cloud mean in this specific season? That sort of thing is really clever. So, again, solid 7 out of 10 for rustling uh, leaves here for me. What do you got? I'm very close. I'm at a 7.5. Honestly, if it wasn't for the usability concern, it it, it might even be an Um, 8. This is one that, that I will play as an app probably more than I'll play with this, but I will play with the physical uh, version as well. Um, We've mentioned a few of the things that I think are clever design decisions. Another little one is that, you know, some complaints that people have with games where everyone is simultaneously marking on the sheet using the same die rolls is that, well, you can just do the same thing. Well, this, you're starting in different spots. Right. Little thing, like, you know, it's not, again, it's not anything you haven't necessarily seen before, but every this every design decision seems well-reasoned. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes sense. It doesn't seem like he missed any obvious things. You right. know what I mean? Right. The biggest issue that I think both of us have with it is a production issue, not a design issue. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, solid game, easy to recommend, very crowded space. Not the most innovative thing in the world, but it's pleasant. It's kind of like comfort food. It is. It, it does right, kind yeah. of what you hope it would do. And, you know, it, it is at a, a time period where you can definitely play two, three games of this, just try different seasons and, and get a really nice experience. So 7.5 for me. There you go, folks. 7, 7.5. Comfort food, I think, mm. is a good way to put this one. Rustling leaves is one I would recommend. And uh, so would Mike, I guess. So. Indeed. There you go, folks. Thanks very much for checking this out. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. We're going to see you on the next one. Take care.